Spence Bridge still on schedule to reopen next week after more than a month of repairs. Yeah, the crash that caused the damage has raised new concerns about what hazardous materials should be allowed on the bridge. Local 12's James Pilcher joins us live now from Covington with how local officials are asking for tighter restrictions on hazmat through northern Kentucky. James. Thanks, Adam. State officials are very clear. The truck that was carrying the hazardous, hazardous material that caused the fire, that caused the damage, that caused the shutdown, was allowed to be there. But this entire situation, including the closure, has renewed attention on a little known ban on hazardous material on I-7175 I North from 275 to the bridge. Now it's the only ban of its kind on any interstate in all of Kentucky. Federal and state highway officials put the ban in place in 2013. But south of 275, there are no signs indicating that hazmat is not allowed through this stretch of northern Kentucky and on the bridge. That's why Covington City Commission is going to take up a resolution tomorrow night. The city will ask the state for better signage and enforcement of the hazmat restriction. As bad as the damage was, it could have been far worse, but now we're on notice. And now we must take the steps to publicize and enforce the ban. One of the trucks involved in the November 11th crash that closed the bridge was carrying potassium hydroxide. But it wasn't enough to qualify as a hazardous material load. That's according to State Transportation Secretary Jim Gray. The only sign indicating anything about a hazmat ban is close to the bridge itself but it advises truckers to use I-75 and avoid the Lytle Tunnel in Ohio, the site of another hazmat ban. And it's actually one last reminder that they need to continue north on I-75 rather than east to I-71 and the Lytle Tunnel. The transportation cabinet has thus far left it to trucking companies to know the rules and not post any signs. But Secretary Gray says the closure has created more conversations around hazmat meaning possible changes could be coming. And we're using this opportunity to take a hard look at what regulations currently exist and perhaps what might be updated. It's the responsibility of every truck driver to know his or her route. I asked state officials earlier today just how much hazardous material comes up and down this highway every day. They say they don't know, they don't keep track. The reason, as Secretary Gray just said, they are rely on those truckers and trucking companies that carry the hazardous material to voluntarily avoid the area. Live in Covington, James Pilcher, Local 12 News. Very interesting, all right, thank you, James. When the contract was awarded, it was estimated that the repairs would cost $3.1 million. Officials say there would be additional costs, but that amount hasn't been determined just yet.